Hi guys, Arthur here from Homeowner DIY. Today what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to install a tub or shower diverter. Now the only thing that is different between a tub and a shower diverter uh, on the prefabrication portion is that a shower diverter won't have a tub spout. Now in my particular case here the homeowner wants a tub spout so they can fill buckets. Sometimes you will see a spout in a shower. They call it a toe tester so you can uh, feel the water on your toes before you uh, turn on the shower head. But guys uh, when it comes to buying a diverter uh, sometimes you'll get a rough and body, uh, sometimes you get a, a trim kit. In this case here, this is a Moen, everything comes in the uh, the box itself. So it depends on the manufacturer. Delta, for what I normally install on my own, uh, they come separately. But I, I think it just allows you to have different trims all in the same rough and body. Now guys, one thing that you have to keep in mind, whether you're going to install copper or PEX, you're going to have to get that separately. All you get with the kit is the rough and body, the cartridge, and then the trim. So guys, uh, for the material portion that I couldn't show you, uh, the lumber will be two two by sixes, uh, a two by four that is cut up for backing to mount the diverter, one inch screws and then three inch screws. But what we'll do now is the material list for our diverter. All right guys, this is our materials list. So this is a Moen Mina. Uh, this has the rough and body and the trim all together. So guys, this is our, our rough and body. I have a FIP by Sweat. Uh, wing back and then I have a uh, sweat by sweat wing back. So this is going to be for the shower head. The shower head threads into the top here. And in this case, because the homeowner wants a toe tester or uh, something to fill up a bucket, I'm going to put in a spout, but this is going to be for a shower base. I have two lengths of copper. Guys, this is type L copper. That is why it's blue. It says type L right there. And I don't have them here, but I also need a uh, swept by PEX 90s. I have them at the site, so they'll go in here and then just 90 down. But uh, for material, this is what I need to build a diverter. So what we'll do now is the tools list. All right, guys, this is our tools list. So I have my finishing kit. This is uh, my soldering supplies. Torch for safety equipment. We have earplugs, glasses, half inch crimpers, skill saw. I have my cordless kit. I need the saw is all the impact. I have my small increment level. And for hand tools, hammer, measuring tape, pex cutters, speed square. Guys, this is what I need for tools for this job. So let's get started. All right, guys, first thing that I'm going to do is Take off the ring and then there's a C clip for these Moens. Take that out. And then take out the cartridge. Just in case it gets too hot and you melt something and have to go replace the cartridge later on. Alright, so the C-clip, the cartridge, and then the sleeve, we'll just throw that off to the side. Alright guys, so with our body, it says up. Make sure that you install it right side up. We'll take our half inch fitting brush, we're just going to clean it really quickly. Guys, the brass is brand new, so you don't really need to clean it all that much. Our wing back 90 for a shower head. So guys, I already cut this to size. Uh, the height of your shower head and the height of your cartridge is uh, purely subjective to the homeowner, is what the, whatever they want. I mean, there is no real rule 
rule of thumb. I would say the cartridge as a rule of thumb is about 40 inches, three and a half feet off the ground. All right guys, for our spout, our tote tester, our bucket filler, whatever you wanna call it, I have measured out a 16 and a half inch piece. This is what the homeowner wanted for a height. Next, stream it out. Very important, you cannot skip this step. Okay, now we're going to flux everything. So guys, when you do it, the screws are gonna go in here. Don't accidentally, because I have done this, don't accidentally have your cartridge, your body here, and then you've done it like this. I mean, you can make it work in a pinch, but that is a mistake to avoid. Like I said, I have done it. All right, guys, for the alignment, what I'm looking to do is the edge of the pipe here, I'm gonna look and then line the two up. That looks all right, and then that looks all right. Guys, you wanna be straight, not on an angle like this. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I'll solder the bottom half first. I'm gonna give it 30 seconds to cool, and then we're going to flip it around, and then we're going to align the uh, shower wing back 90, and guys, I'll show you how to do that as well. All right guys, for soldering, have earplugs, and safety glasses on. Okay, let's give that about 30 seconds to cool before we flip the diverter around. All right guys, so we see our shower wing back 90 is canted on an angle, so this side is lower. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reference this to the very front of the diverter to see where it will line up. All right guys, so the the top here and then the top of the cartridge look to be lined up. You can also throw in like uh, a steel nipple or a shower arm if you want to, I'm not going to. This looks straight for me. So now what I'm gonna do is I'll solder this and then that'll be what I can do right now until I go back to the site and then solder the sweat by PEX 90s. Okay, give that about 30 seconds to cool and then I'll wipe it down with a wet piece of paper towel. We'll look at our joints. If everything looks good, then we'll be done with this. All right, guys, once again, wet rag, wet paper towel. And always do the first four, six inches, something like that. All right, looking down the line, you can see how everything is aligned. So this is all done. Now what I'll do is I'll take it back to the site. I'll put on the sweat by PEX adapters and then we'll be ready for install all right guys so this is our sweat by PEX 90 that's what it looks like and it just fits inside this will eliminate having to use a PEX 90 and two rings
All right, guys, this is our shower diverter. So you see the stud in the middle that needed to be dealt with. So I put two studs, one here, one here. Guys, when you are mounting your diverter, what matters is the depth. So we have a ring here. This needs to be flush with the finished wall, which is going to be, uh, the finished wall will be 5 8 out. So there will be a half inch of aqua board, which is a green board. And then there's an eighth of an inch of whatever the homeowner chose. But in this case, guys, when it comes to doing diverters, set your depth first here. And then you can do your head there. And in this case, we can do this here. The reason that you want to uh, set this first is because this will dictate where you need to be for your shower head. And in this case, or if you have a spout, uh, a tub spout, uh, that is going to be uh, based off of this here. Guys, remember, we want two things. We want it to be plumb, four to back, and then we want it to be straight from left to right as well. All right, guys, so to look at this, we can see that it is plumb. It is nice and straight. And now for our spout, we'll put this here. And you can see that this is level. Now, guys, if you don't uh, if you don't level your tub spout, you're going to see it. So the last thing for this is I'm going to just need to uh, connect the water pipe to the diverter itself. But guys, as a rule of thumb, I'd always say put your tub or your shower in first before you hang your diverter. This diverter I just installed temporarily. This is not the final place for it to go. But for the most part, I mean, a diverter should be easier than than what I've had to do with here. But uh, the person didn't leave any space for the diverter when they framed the wall. But with that in mind, I will come back and I will do the uh, final install with the shower base in. So you guys can see uh, the way I line up the diverter with the drain of the shower or the tub all right guys to install our diverter what we want is the diverter to be in the center of the shower base so the shower drain is 14 and a half to center all right so for the center of the diverter for the center of the pipe here, that is on the very edge of the stud that I cut out. What I'll do is make a mark at the top where the shower head is going to be. And then make a mark where the cartridge is going to be. Okay, we have a mark there, we have a mark there. So now what I'll do is I will screw the diverter in. All right guys, for your shower head, if you're not confident in your skills, I would say use inch and a half. I'm gonna just use one inch screws. The reason is, is that the thickness of the wing back is only an eighth of an inch, which leaves us seven eighths to bite into the wood. The thing is, if you keep uh, turning the screw when it's already all the way in, you're just stripping out the wood. And this is a very common thing that I've seen with, uh, with guys that uh, don't have much experience. So you just want to tighten down just until the wing back bites into the wood. And put something in. The shower base so you don't scratch it with your shoes. Alright, so I have one screw for the shower head in. So I'm going to take my level. I'm going to put it on the piece of copper. That is plumb right there. And it also makes sense with my mark at the bottom. So now I'm going to put the other screw 
into the top. And guys, like I said, you just want your wing back just to barely depress into the wood and you're tight. Okay, for the water lines, I suggest crimp it on first and then tack your water lines after. That way, at least uh, you can move your clip up and down to where it's going to work for you the best. All right, so that is in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a couple. I'm gonna grab a couple three inch screws and then put it in for the body. Okay, for the cartridge body, there's two threaded holes, one here, one here. That is for the trim. And then you have one here and one here. And that is to screw the roughened body to the backing. All right, once again, let's check for plumb. Yes, we are plumb. All right, so we'll check off of our wall. Right there's where it needs to be. And then when you're all done, give it a shake and you should be okay. And then last but not least, we'll tack in our water lines. So guys, a close up. This is the mounting holes and then this is threaded. This is threaded and there's the other mounting hole to hold the diverter in place. So like I said, give it a shake. It's nice and solid. This diverter is not going anywhere. So guys, that concludes the install for this shower diverter. All right guys, so this plastic ring that I talked about, this is gonna be your guide for cutting your drywall. If you put tile, that's also a guide for that and then this is also going to be your depth gauge so for this one it has to be flush to the front here so guys when you are going to install a diverter don't get rid of your plastic cover keep that till the very end all right guys so that concludes this project so in this case uh because the previous contractor didn't leave a space for the diverter i i had to cut the stud down the middle and then put another two studs in guys uh, Again, going back to knowing what you're going to install, a tub or a shower, by knowing where the drain is, you can leave a space for a diverter and not have to cut something out just to be able to install the diverter. The time on this job. The time was about two hours. Uh, most of that was cutting the stud out because I had to go down the middle to uh, to get it out of the way. Then I had to put in two new studs and then set backing guys one other thing when it comes to uh diverter depth and this is something that is critical as well depending on the manufacturer uh for moen they say go flush with the plastic cover but i've seen other ones that have a min max so it'll give you a three quarter inch uh area of play that you can be in but guys you need to be conscious about how deep to set the diverter uh, another thing that's going to dictate the depth of the diverter, are you going to put in tile? Uh, for this shower, it's going to be backer board, which is an eighth of an inch thick. But tile is, with mortar, probably a half inch thick. So guys, you need to know what your finished surface is going to be. If it's a shower stall and you have acrylic, that's going to change the depth that you're going to install the diverter. The cost of this job... Uh, I didn't supply the diverter, but the diverter, body trim, the kit, copper, screws, and lumber, I'm going to say is $250. So guys, uh, when it comes to diverters, in my personal opinion, install copper, don't use PEX. Copper is stronger. 
it's more rigid and it'll last longer. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. I hope something here is going to help you on your project when you need to go ahead and do that. Guys, until next time, please hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next project.